Chevy fast might lift off. Big chain, I'm a big dog. She can't keep her hands off. I've been grinding all week. Ain't got no time to sleep. Shooting my shot like I play for the league. Young nigga can't take no days off. Uh, stick to the plan. Stick it up. Count it up. Run through the bands. Young nigga. Stick to the plan. Stick it up. Count it up. Run through the bands. Young nigga. Stick to the plan. Stick it up. Count it up. Run through the bands. Young nigga. Stick to the plan. Lord, I can't take. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Glenn back with another one. I uh, got a special guest. I got my boy, my brother, Arian Penn, man. What's going on? What's up with you, bro? Nothing much, nothing much. Hanging out. How, how you doing? How you doing? How everything going? I'm doing pretty good. You know, uh, just trying to, you know, maintain and stay in shape so I can stay on track, you know? Facts, facts. No doubt, no doubt. So let's talk about. Uh, Let's talk about your uh, high school experience. You went over uh, to CDC, probably one of the powerhouses in St. Louis. How was your experience there, and like, why did you choose CDC coming out? You know, for high school. Um, really, that choice wasn't really up to me, to be honest. That was up to my mother. But um, you know, I knew, you know, it'll it'll be worth it. So I was all in and when she told me she had a school in mind for me, for her school, you know, uh, I was like, all right. And, you know, I just went all in. Yeah. Yep. So you played uh, receiver and DB there. And then um, y'all made, made it to state, right? One year, right? Yeah, my junior year. Your junior year. Tell us about that experience, you know, playing in the Dome. Who y'all played that year? I want to say it was Blue Springs South. Tell us about your yeah. state experience. Everybody can't get the state. Man, I say it was it was lovely. Just the atmosphere, you know, the being in the dome, the uh, Edward Jones dome that the Rams played in. It was just you know a great environment, uh, bright lights, you know what you dream of, Friday night light kind of feel, you know. But just knowing that I had a solid team and you know everybody had a one goal to, you know, make it to stay. It was a, a big accomplishment. It felt great. For sure, for sure. And um, what was your deciding factor for college? Like, you probably had a, a bunch of offers on the table. You end up going to Mizzou and playing DB. Did they recruit you for uh, DB or receiver? Um, Gary Pingle, uh, he, he recruited me as an athlete, basically, mm -hmm. bro. He was just like, he loved the way I play. He loved how I hustle and how I grind. He was just like, I'm a dog. I can play where I want to, you know, wherever I feel I want to play. He trusts me. So just getting there, bro, as a true freshman, I just, you know, was trying to get in where I fit in. You know, I was just looking at the slots and the pieces to the puzzle. And at the time, they needed me at DB. I had two seniors in front of me, and that was it. Yeah. So... I felt like it was some spots to be, you know, filled. Right, right. And when you first got there, it was the Big 12, and then y'all made that transition to the SEC where y'all go ahead and – what, y'all win two SEC titles or division titles or whatever? Yeah, yep. My, my first two years, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, they was in the SEC the year before I got there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they took a, you know, a good little beating that first year in the SEC. and. That second year, we, we transformed. Yeah, most definitely. I think y'all had the y'all had the advantage when y'all transformed and y'all brought that big old that, that passing offense, the whole spread to the SEC, which they hadn't seen yet, like that. And yeah, y'all had the y'all had the y'all had the front that they didn't expect. You know, y'all guys up front, that front seven was nasty. Come on now, you know <laughs> they call it D line zoo for a reason. You heard. <laughs> Facts, facts. Uh, tell us about that, though. Like, you know, a lot of people hear that the, the SEC physical, you know, you got your big, you got your fronts that's big. Tell us about that playing Florida, playing Alabama and Georgia. Man, lovely. It's just, I know me, I was born in 94, so, you know, growing up, just like you, you cut on Fox, too. Yeah. It's the swamp. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Percy Harvin, Tim Tebow, like, you know, it's just legendary. That's the first thing that came to my head once I made it to the to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm in college now. So that was a big part. It was just like, man, I grew up watching SEC teams play all the time. 
Like that's the biggest that's the biggest stage to me in my eyes. I don't know about everybody else, you know, it's political, but yeah. I was just like, I took it and ran with it. I gotta go. Yeah. Like, why not? Right. I'm in my yeah. hometown, so it's just like the atmosphere is crazy because it's legendary to me. You know, the greats played in there, LSU, Baton Rouge, and Georgia, Florida, the Swamp, like South Carolina, everywhere. It's just legendary. Mm-hmm. So I felt I felt good to say, you know, I'm from St. Louis. And, you know, I'm in Mizzou, which is in my state, yeah. and they in the SEC. So, you know, I want to, you know, put on for the state. Right, facts, facts. On you all platforms. Right, right. You yeah, you one of the few that, you know, they ain't let get out the city. I feel like Mizzou, they let a they let a lot of our cats get out the city when they should be staying right there, you know, at Mizzou. That's our biggest school in Missouri. Hey, you could say that too. But then again, like, you never know. Everybody different. Yeah. Like, I don't sometimes when I think about it, I don't really I I don't blame other people for not going to Mizzou because Mizzou don't fit everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but we definitely, we had a lot of, you know, a lot of talent in the city, man, that if we all were at the Mizzou, we have a lot of championships. For, for sure. sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, so, tell us about the draft process. I thought you was going to get drafted, and the guy I really compared you with was another, or well, he played in SEC, and he went first round, which I don't understand, because I still don't think he's playing now, is Marquise Alexander. You yeah. had similar stats as him, and he went first round, and you end up going undrafted. Tell us about that. Man, to be honest, bro, I don't really uh, – <laughs> well, what I really say is this, like, I put in my draft on my junior year. So this is before my senior stats. And mm-hmm. Coach Gary Pingle, you know, talking to me like I'm talking to you face-to-face. He just like, you know, the stuff came back. You're not a – you're not a first round or fourth round pick right now. So it wouldn't, I mean, you could go out, but if I were you, I'd stay. So you could boost your stats, you know, be the best, be the top in the conference, you know, everything. So that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Come to find out he got fired. So we got a new coaching staff and everything. Let alone I did what I did my senior season, you know, mm-hmm. held it down. Right. First team SEC. So I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking how you thinking I'm thinking everything good everything you know in motion, and it's just pro day came. Numbers ain't I guess ain't won't ain't look what they wanted it to be you know politic wise. So mm-hmm. I felt like that kind of set me back a little bit. So therefore I went undrafted free agent, yeah. but the highest paid. So basically like they know my worth but yeah. here yeah so you went that was that was still dope you know you got the opportunity and it ended up being the rams which is the home team but they moved to los angeles tell us about that going out there to los angeles you in the bb room with what, tremaine johnson at the time and was it jenkins was still there uh, uh who was who was that no my big bro that played with me in mizzou was there at the time for game the- uh yeah, EJ Gaines. Yep. Well, I was there doing training camp. Um, Nikhil Roby, he was in there. He was a DB with me. Mo Alexander, who you just mentioned, he was up there. So, man, it was it was lovely. That's a wonderful experience. But that's why I got to get back in. That's why I'm still going. But it's just when you interacting with other people from different schools who all got the same goal, and you know what I'm saying hard work driven it's like man i could surround myself with these people every day and make myself even better than what i am now you know right. so it's just getting the knowledge that you know and taking knowledge that they know and putting it all together and it's just making everything easier for you for sure for sure now that's dope you got that opportunity to go out to la like you said you kind of felt home when you had some of your your big bros already out there and stuff like that. So then um, you take your – you end up going to the CFL. Tell us what they're like. Like I said, Spencer went to the CFL. He got that experience. Um, you touched the CFL uh, last year. Tell us what's that like. 
Man, look, I'm going to tell you this first off, bro. I don't know if I jinxed myself, but I told myself I thought I was too good to ever play in the CFL, bro. No cap. I'm like, I know my worth. But come to find out, I'm here. And I like it, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it kind of it kind of takes me back to college, bro, because it's just a whole diversity, you know what I'm saying, thing where you're seeing different type of people, different different cultures, different, different everything, and the living different. I'm out there. I don't have a vehicle. I take the metro, right. but I'm living in a penthouse. You know yeah. what I'm saying? There's vibes like that. So it's just like a humbling experience, you know? The mm -hmm. fans loyal. So it's like, man, getting faced with this and me being from the States and get to see how you live as a Canadian, it's like, man, I got the best of both worlds right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I heard Spencer said his love. You said his love. Uh, who was Will? I didn't. I forgot that Will Brown from uh, Rolla. He went over there too for a minute. He said his love, like he's like you're saying, the culture different. You you see different things. Man, beautiful women, <laughs> food great. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just just everything, man. Shopping, everything. They got everything you need. Yeah. Who would right you? Know, who would you say helped uh, mold you to your player today? I know Coach Erd got to be on the list. For sure. And that's crazy because that's straight basketball. Like, but, like, I, I got to say everybody, bro. Yeah. Because, you know, we Virgos, bro. We perfectionists. So, bro, everything we go through or face or get a little knowledge from, we, yeah. we putting it in the arsenal. You feel yeah. me? So, yeah. everybody, bro, along the way to this point, bro, I, I, you know, I want to thank because – it ain't nothing but life lessons, bro. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I had a bunch of coaches. Yeah. It started with Coach Eric. We got Coach Keith. You already know. You know a bunch of my coaches. So, and your Facts. pops was one of my coaches. Facts. Facts. So. Yeah, Coach Eric was different, boy. I swear to God, like, we didn't touch a ball one practice. We just ran. Man, what? Just straight <laughs> fundamentals. We had a visible ball. <laughs> That was crazy. And nobody wanted to see the Timberwolves in AAU. Not at all. No. And we was always the underdogs, for real. It's like, who the Timberwolves? Every time we went to Herbert Hoover, and man, you know what I'm saying? They're like, who is this? We outside. Yeah. And then start running folks out the gym. For real. Um, so tell us, uh, give us your top top five corners. You play DB. Who your top five corners? As of right now, or all time. You can do all time, all time, all time. Ooh. All right, you know, I got to go with, with my boy, Dion. Right. He the go for sure, for sure. Um, other than that, I'm I'm all, what, new school. After, after Dion, I got to go, like, Pat P. Uh, you said five, that's two. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, I love his game. He not getting beat deep. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, Marcus Lattimore. Yeah. Oh, that's four. One more. Mm, Humphrey's going crazy. I ain't going <laughs> crazy. And he my class. That's why I'm like, bro, I got to get back in. I told Will today in Marlin in my top five, bro. Man, I like Joe Hayden. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of little groovy man corners that you know just swag out in the in the league. How they supposed to? For sure. Who would you uh? Bro. You got you got a chance. So who would you say is the toughest receiver to uh to guard? Who would you say the toughest receiver to guard? I mean, bro. As of now, till I get back in, Amari Cooper was. Oh, you played him at Alabama. At Alabama, yeah, he was. He was one of the best receivers I ever seen in college, for sure, by far. But don't get me wrong, I was in the SEC, so I seen a lot of competition, mm -hmm. and most of those receivers in the league today. That's why I'm still trying to get in, cause they know what's up. Like my name, whole weight. It's just, it's timing, but. 
even at the Rams, bro, just getting a taste of everything. Tavon Austin, Sammy Watkins, yeah, Marcus Woods. <laughs> I'm talking Chris Rouse, Cooper Cup. Like, I mean, it's just a bunch of receivers. It's like legit. Yeah. Uh, Zay Jones. Yeah. Was in my draft class, bro. Crazy. Like yeah. I remember when I played receiver, they liked that, bro. For sure. For real. For sure. What um, what advice would you give to a kid? You know, high school. They going into their senior year. What advice would you give them? Uh, like picking picking college. You know, like you said, you stay basically you stay home. And then you have other cats that go away. What, what advice would you give if you got the opportunity to play three, four years and everybody needs to play to get to the next level? So what would, advice would you give to the kids? Um, I'm going to tell them to do what I did do, which was fully take all five official visits. I'm going to tell you why, because that really gives you – it, you know, it's a lot of colleges, but it, it narrow everything down and you get to see what atmosphere really fits you, which coaches really love you for you, see where you come from. You know what I mean? Don't just, oh, this this was my school. This was all I dreamed about. I just want to pick that. No, you know, make them wait. Hold on a little minute. Let me, let me step over here and see what it's like on the West Coast. Let me step over here and see what it's like on the South. Let me step over here. You know what I'm saying? See what the Midwest like or what the DMV like up in the East or something, you know? Right. So I know me, it was different. I seen Mizzou, I seen SEC, I jumped right on it. I know that limited other, you know what I'm saying, schools as well. But for anybody that's a senior in high school, I tell them to narrow down five schools and go experience the culture of all five and then pick. For sure. That's it is great advice, and I think um, we'll we'll mention that uh, make sure you find the people that that wants you, not just trying to fill a spot. That wants you. That's telling you that I got wrong. You know, I'm making plans for you, this and that. Because yes. if you're not making plans for you, then you know it's gonna be hella hard for you to get on the field. Yep. And like, it's, a, it's a political game at the end of the day. Yep, it's what can you do for me? Right. So if they don't feel like – I mean, obviously they already going to want you because they see that you're an athlete or you got something going on. But at the time when you get there, it's like a culture shock because it's like you could be that guy that's a – that been that guy in your city or your school all four years and then you get to college and it's like, dang, it's, it's five of me. Yeah. It's it's three of me. It's ten of me, yeah. and it's like once one once it's your time, it's your time. It might be your time right then and there. For sure, you might For have sure. the red shirt, and you know what I'm saying. Get yourself together. Then it's your time. But when yeah. when it's your time, it's your time. You gotta rock out, and you gotta give them what they want. For sure. Because if not, they just gonna push you back. Then you just gotta get a, a scholarship. I know you. You know everybody want a first round. Mm -hmm. This and that, but when it come down to it, you there for school. So you gotta, you know, give both all in for both. No doubt, no doubt. But now, nah, bro, I appreciate you for stopping by. I know you always, my dog, always love, bro. We stay connected. You know, keep grinding so you can get back to the NFL or the CFL. You still should be out there playing, man. Flying around, making plays. You know it, man. This came a long way, man. Diamond in the rough. I'm always here. I'm only 25, so I'm still going till I can't no more. Facts, facts. But now I appreciate you. Got any other partners that want to hop on that you play with? Let me know. Set it up. We can get it going. I got you, bro. I appreciate you too. I like this, you know, this little thing you got going, bro. Even not only this, but everything. You know, your your photo stuff, everything, bro. You know, you gotta you gotta paint the right way for, you know, this generation coming up. Thanks. So we we got a lot of stuff to take advantage of. Thanks. You know? No, no doubt. We going we gonna link to your nephew uh your uh your brother, not your nephew, your brother. He getting there, he tough. I got my little nephew going up too, so hopefully they can catch up, man. Get 
get the work too. We all, we all know the same people, so it's only right. Get the same coaching and stuff we had and watch it transform. No doubt, but I appreciate you, bro. It's all love. I'll see you next time. No problem, bro. I'll see you. All right. What's up?